Welcome to FCP Conversations Online, featuring Bucks County nonprofit leaders. Join our discussion with community organizations that share our mission and are making a difference in the lives of our neighbors. Hello, I'm Ron Bernstein, the Executive Director of Foundations Community Partnership. Welcome to FCP Conversations Online, and thank you for joining us. Our guest today is Wayne McGrower, the President and CEO of the Penn Foundation, located in Sellersville in Upper Bucks County. Wayne, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ron. Happy to be here. I think a lot of people uh, don't know that much about the history and mission of Penn Foundation for us down here in the lower end of the county and the middle part of the county. Give us a feel for that. Happy to do that. Well, Penn Foundation is a 65-year-old not-for-profit uh, community-based mental health and drug and alcohol program. And the thing that some people may find interesting is that our roots really are linked to the Anabaptist, the Mennonite community. And Mennonite, Anabaptist men, Quaker men who are members of the so-called Peace Church groups did alternative service in World War II in state psychiatric hospitals as conscientious objectors. And out of that experience, people came back to the community and really felt like they needed to do something differently and more humane uh, that was in keeping with their religious values. So out of that, uh, there was developed nationally a Mennonite mental health services movement that established five psychiatric hospitals across the country. Penn Foundation wasn't part of that initial group, but in 1955, with that inspiration, Penn Foundation built a community-based outpatient program. And the whole goal, actually, of Penn Foundation and part of our mission and values was to have our services in the community for the community. So by definition, we chose not to. The founding fathers and mothers of Penn Foundation chose not to build a hospital, but rather to build an outpatient program and to develop programs that at the time were called day programs. Now we talk about them and refer to them as partial hospital programs right, or right. intensive outpatient programs. Well, you mentioned the programs. What? Just tell us, uh, what, what do you think of as your core programs? Well, you know, that's a, another great question. Our, our, real, our core programs, Ron, are very diverse. Uh, Penn Foundation uh, employs about 435 people. We have 42 programs. We're about a $30 million organization. And if you looked at those programs, about a third of them are related to drug and alcohol programming. About a third are related to mental health programming. And about a third are related to psychiatric rehabilitation and residential programs. And so, but you guys work with children, youth, adolescents, families, and seniors all across all, the All of the above. Yeah. Uh, of, of all the populations that you mentioned, we probably have the smallest offerings right now, programmatic offerings for uh, senior adults, for older adults. But given the fact that we're all aging rapidly, that's something that we're looking at carefully. Well, what are the uh, major trends that you guys are seeing in your market? Well, of course, the, the major trend in all of our communities has had to do with addiction and specifically heroin addiction and opioid abuse and addiction. So uh, in 1988, we developed a residential inpatient program uh, that at that time was uh, about 25 beds. We've expanded that over the years to 55 beds. 39 of those beds are related to, and this is all addictions focused, 39 of those beds are related to rehabilitation and 16 are related to detoxification. And then we have a whole variety of outpatient programs that support them. Right. Intensive outpatient, partial hospital, traditional outpatient, uh, and mobile engagement. So, I, you know, needless to say, we read about this in the newspapers, that the issues of alcohol-related addictions have not gone away. But I think the tsunami, the epidemic of opioid addiction has, has just been incredibly pressing for us. We've changed our programming. We've changed our facilities. We've had to change our staffing because the age cohort for the people that we're treating now is contrasted to 10 years ago is a young adult population. So it's what we call transitional age youth, 18 to 25 year olds, right. who not only have these incredibly terrible addiction issues, but because they're IV drug abusing, they also have really serious primary care issues. And in part because of our expertise, 
or caring for people who have co-occurring issues. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they also have a, a co-occurring mental health issue as well. Well, I know uh, a year or two ago, you uh, opened a new location, part of a, a response to what you were seeing in, over in Colmar, correct? Correct. Uh, actually, we opened that in August. So at this point, just uh, this last August, just this past August. Okay. Uh, and the the reason we opened the program in Colmar is that um, what we've been doing with the support of the Buck, Bucks County uh, Drug and Alcohol Council and Montgomery County Drug and Alcohol is putting warm handoff uh, resources in the emergency departments of local hospitals. So we're at Lansdale Hospital, which is part of the Abington uh, Jefferson system. We're at St. Luke's and we're also at Grandview. So what we're finding is that people want services that are convenient and close to where they live. And the need for expansion on our campus was such that we thought it would really serve the community best if we began to branch out with some satellites. And I know you also have a new building uh, going up there on the main campus. We do. Uh, actually, we're, we're going to name that building the Horwood Building after uh, one of our founding directors. And that building actually is the last building we purchased it about a year ago that's contiguous to our main campus. And we've completely renovated that building. And one floor of that building will be for addictions. And, and actually what we're going to experiment with is all of this is outpatient uh, and we're going to separate out the alcohol cohort from some of the other groups and some of the other programs that have been really focused on opioid addicted clients. Hey, well, I want to change subjects a little bit because I want to make sure we talk about one of your summer camps, which is a pretty special program, the Mariposa program that you guys initially started doing with the Moyer Foundation, uh, and that'd be Jamie Moyer, the That's former right. professional pitcher the, with the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, Jamie Moyer was a Sounderton boy and a local hero, and I think it's really appropriate that we talk about this today because it's Giving Tuesday when we're having this conversation, and Penn Foundation uh, has a developing and growing presence uh, on this day of charity, uh, and we focus our gifts. Of course, people can give to any program that they would like, but we focus our giving on Giving Tuesday for Camp Mariposa. And you're quite correct. The Moyer Foundation is the group that organized this. They recently changed their name to the Aluna uh, group. And Aluna has really done some remarkable work with uh, partners that started out being in major baseball cities, no surprise there. Mm -hmm. And the, the camp that we're operating with their support really focuses on kids who are pre-teenagers, uh, kind of pre-pubescent, uh, eight, 10, 12 year old kids who are living with, in their immediate family, active addiction. And the whole goal here is to really give these kids some tools to manage their lives and to understand what's happening around them in their immediate family, to understand what may be going on with an addicted parent or sibling, uh, and to really understand that they don't have to live that life, that there are tools that they can have to deal with their feelings, and that at the end of the day, uh, it's not their fault. So it's been an amazing camping program. It's a camping experience as well as a counseling experience. We have counselors in training. This year we had, uh, we used drumming as part right. of that program. Right. This year during our autumn event, we had the kids come out and we had them drum. And we had, you know, these just young kids who are dealing with incredible issues talk about their own personal experience and how Camp Mariposa has helped them live normal lives. Well, I think it's a super program. I got to meet a couple of the staff and really exceptional, talented people working with those kids. So I think that's great. As you and the, the board, Wayne, and your role as CEO, and as you're sitting around with your board, how do you guys think about measuring the impact you're having on your community? Well, you know, uh, I, I think that that's something that we're looking at every day. And, and the way I think about that is really threefold. I mean, first of all, obviously, we look at program outcomes. Are we getting the desired clinical outcomes that we want from a program? Are we operating those programs effectively? And that becomes increasingly important as uh, there's more demand for our service and revenues are scarce. The second thing that we look at is administrative efficiency. One of the things that my board holds me and I hold our staff accountable to is operating a very efficient organization. 
So the national benchmarks for organizations' administrative expense for organizations like ours are in the range of 16%. We operate in the range of 12%. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get that down to 9 or 10% because really... So that means that every dollar you get, 88 cents of it, goes to clinical service. Care. Absolutely. And, that's a, and that's really important. And yeah. really the last thing is we think about, you know, our, our mission statement talks about building community and we're doing a great deal. And, and some of this has been with your support, your foundation support. We're, we're doing a great deal in the community in terms of education and outreach. And, you know, I think we measure our effectiveness by, frankly, how many people show up. Mm -hmm. So when we have community events and 150 or 250 or even 350 people show up and the fire marshal says there's too many people here for the capacity of the room, we feel like that really says that we're getting out there. People are listening to the message. The message is important. We additionally do some uh, clinical education, not only for our own staff, but regularly for the community. And lastly, this past year, we established a Speakers Bureau, which has just been remarkably well utilized. Well, I know you guys uh, do some fundraising, but I also know you have a very significant event that you do annually in the fall. Can you mention that, please, Wayne? Sure, absolutely. We, we have an event called the Autumn Event. Obviously, it's in autumn. It's usually in September. This year, our speaker was Ginger Z, who's the uh, six ABC TV national meteorologist. And what we try and find is someone who can come and, and really engage the staff and the community, but someone who has a personal story of recovery to tell. And Ginger Z fit that uh, expectation beautifully this year. She told the story of, of her recovery, of her depression. Uh, she recently wrote a book, and it was called uh, Natural Disasters, I Cover Them, I Am One. And she talked very openly about uh, some of the issues that she's faced that are issues, frankly, that many people face. And I think our goal is to, to do away with, uh, you know, any kind of stigma associated with the services we provide. And by having people come to our community to help us raise money for our cause and people who are of some prominence, for them to be able to tell their stories right. is a remarkable thing. The other thing that we do, Ron, is that we always honor a staff member for um, a service award. It's named the Vernon H. Kratz. Uh, Dr. Vernon Kratz was a former CEO and medical director at Penn Foundation. He's still on our medical staff. So we, we honor a staff member who really kind of represents his life of servant leadership. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we have a program called the Adventures in Excellence. And that typically either uh, identifies an individual or a family that through their work, usually their charitable work in the community, exhibits all the qualities that we think represent um, a strong and, and caring community. So this year it was the Landis family and they own uh, the family operated Landis supermarket chain. Well, I assume people in the community, if they want to get involved in volunteering, want to get involved in donating, they just need to go to your website and they can find. Absolutely. Go to our website, www.penfoundation.org and they'll find information about all of our programs. There's an icon called Contact Us, and you can find information about our programs and also uh, arrange to make a donation online or contact uh, any of our staff members or our development department if you're interested in either volunteering or supporting financially any program that is in place. Well, that's great. One more important question, Wayne, because every once in a while I'm up in your neck of the woods and I'm always trying to find a great spot for lunch. You got any recommendations for me? Sure. Have lunch with me at my desk. <laughs> okay. So typically it's a white, uh, white turkey sandwich on uh, rye bread with uh, no mayonnaise, and you're welcome at any time, Ron. You've been a great friend over many years. Well, thank you. That sounds like a great stop. Wayne, thanks for the great work you guys are doing in our Bucks County community. Thanks for joining me today to share your experience and knowledge leading the Penn Foundation. And thank you to our listeners for your involvement in our community. Visit our Facebook page and like us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join the conversation. Foundations Community Partnership believes that when we join forces, we're stronger. We are better able to support the behavioral health and human service needs of children and young adults in Bucks County. 
Join us again for FCP Conversations Online. Let's go farther together.